Welcome to another video from Lockdown Electronics with me Bill and this time we're going to follow on from the previous video which looked at converting analog signals into uh, digital information this time we're going to convert it back and take a little bit of a look at the principles of digital to analog conversion so let's start by having a look at the first circuit converting digital signals to analog uh, is actually quite a bit easier than converting analog to digital so let's look at a, a simple way of doing that so let's first think about a resistor and the current that uh, will flow through that resistor uh, is equal to the voltage supplied divided by the value of the resistor in other words it's inversely proportional to the resistance so if we double the resistance we're going to halve the current and if we quadruple the resistance we're going to quarter the current um, obviously that's the inverse relationship so let's now get four resistors and let's call them value R 2 times R, 4 times R and 8 times R. If we then feed those 4 resistors with say a 4 bit digital signal, connect the outputs together, the current that's going to be flowing um, at the output on the right there is going to be proportional to the uh, digital signal that's been supplied to the, the 4 resistors. Now that current isn't a great deal of use to us initially so we need to convert that into a voltage and the easy way to do that is to uh, use an op amp in inverting uh, op amp format uh, refer to previous videos I'll link up the top to how you um, can see one of those but that's the op amp and inverting configuration and the output of the op amp the voltage should be proportional to the current flowing at the inverted input and there we've got a really simple 4-bit digital to analog converter so how's that going to look on the breadboard well first of all let me start by saying you can ignore everything uh, on the left the bit of circuit we're interested in is uh, on the right underneath the circuit diagram the bit on the left I will fully explain on the bench um, that's just something I'm using to generate a digital signal and it's not what this video is about so what we've got is we've got an op amp that happens to be a single inline package I recovered from something that I've occasionally used in previous videos it's a dual op amp I'm just using one of them and then we've got our four resistors there R, 2R, 4R and 8R now those are the best values I can manage to try and give me to uh, 1 times, 2 times, 4 times and 8 times they're not exact so that's going to reduce the uh, quality of the output and finally hard to see because it's end on we've got the 3K3 resistor there acting as the uh, feedback resistor around the output and the inverting input of the op amp ok that's the general circuit and we're going to look at the output of that uh, and we're going to attach the scope to the red uh, jumper lead which is um, leading off on the center right hand side of the breadboard there so let's hop onto the bench and have a look how that all works okay um, here's the circuit laid out on the breadboard then ignore everything gear that's um, something completely different so what we've got there's there's the op amp there's the resistor ladder that's the op amp feedback resistor and I've got output attached to a scope here and I've got four lines here which are bringing in a digital signal now just to make this um, easy to visualize and see that there really is a digital to analog conversion going on I've got a, a chip here which is the uh, 74LS191 that's a 4-bit binary counter and I've got the four outputs of that attached to four LEDs and I've got the input, uh, the clock input attached to a signal generator and that's going to uh, uh, slowly count up uh, in binary uh, based on the speed of the clock input so if I just switch the clock on at 5 Hz you'll obviously hopefully now see that counting up I hope that's not the best LED colour to see but hopefully it's making some sense and uh, that's cycling through until we get from uh, 0 up to 16 
and then back again 16 being the most we can display in 4-bit binary so that's counting away uh, and those four um, binary signals are being applied to our resistor ladder here exactly as per uh, the circuit diagram you saw on the uh, uh, circuit on the uh, slides just now so what I'm going to do, I'm going to up the speed um, and the reason for that is so we can, uh, it's easier to see on the scope. Um, so I'm actually going to uh, increase it to uh, just over uh, a kilohertz. I'm actually going to pick uh, 1200 hertz. Now the first thing to say is those LEDs are now steady. Um, it's still counting, it's just that uh, you obviously, it's way too fast for us to be able to see. So we're now applying a constantly increasing set of uh, digital signals to the resistor ladder. So if we now look at the scope output, uh, you can see on the scope output that we've got uh, the uh, yellow trace is the most significant bit uh, on the one of the four outputs of the 74LS191 and I'm just using the falling edge of that to trigger the scope and what you can hopefully see those um, purple blotches that climb from left to right that's the output um, of the digital to analog converter now I'm going to get my disclaimers in quick before I'm heavily criticized by people bear in mind that when I showed you the resistor values I have not got exactly uh, one times, two times, four times and eight times. So that's obviously going to affect um, what's going on. But you can hopefully see that we've definitely got uh, an increasing analog voltage from left to right. And if they were precision resistors and we weren't working on a, a noisy breadboard, uh, you'd hopefully see a, a more accurate result. But we've definitely got uh, digital to analog conversion going on there. Okay, well, let's look at another way that we can do this. Um, again, it's the principle is very similar. We're going to use a resistive ladder, as I'm going to call it. Uh, only this time, rather than having uh, one single resistor for each line, we're going to have a combination here. And this is uh, uh, based on the principle that the three resistors in the line there will have the value R, and the other five resistors will have the value two times R. Now the best I can manage here is 10k for R and 22k for 2R. If you're going to suggest to me that I could simply use two of the 22k resistors in parallel to give me um, three 11k resistors, yep I could if I'd got that many 22k resistors which I haven't. So for the purposes of this example uh, we'll just work with what we've got. So digital inputs then going along the top exactly as before into the two R resistors and we attach the same op amp configuration to the output to convert the um, proportional current that's being generated by the resistive ladder into a proportional voltage at the output. So let's go and have a look at this uh, slightly more complicated circuit. Here's the arrangement using uh, the next version then and we've got exactly the same as before we've got the uh, 74LS191 binary counter here attached to the signal generator it's not switched on at the moment those LEDs show you the state of the digital outputs of the counter and then I've just got four yellow jumpers running across to the uh, uh, R2 uh, resistive ladder here and um, so those are the eight uh, uh, seven resistors and that's the um, one going down or in this case up to ground and all I've done is taken the output of that ladder and I'm feeding it into the um, same op amp as before uh, still got the feedback resistor again as previously uh, the only difference now is I'm not using those four resistors they're just completely out of circuit I've just left them there till I tidy the board up later and again the output taken into the scope um, via this red lead here so um, if we enable digital uh, signal from the frequency generator we've just got 5 Hertz here and you can see the counter is counting upwards and is working all the lines so let's now up that to a speed that um, you won't be able to see on the LEDs but will hopefully uh, work a little better for the scope that's there and if we now take a look at the scope trace 
Now you can see you've got your analog ladder. If anything, it's a little better than um, the previous attempt. Uh, one of the reasons for that is this is a slightly more complicated circuit that tends to even out some of the errors. But again, I'm not using close tolerance resistors, um, so they're not exactly matched. But hopefully you can definitely see we are going from a low to a high state as the counter counts between 0 and 16 in binary. And that's what's feeding the analog trace. OK, well they have two versions of converting digital into analog and I hope it's um, uh, made some sense. I could have improved the signals if I'd uh, fed the op amp with a, a split rail supply of a little bit higher voltage, but I was just working everything at 5 volts simply because it's easier to work on the breadboard, but uh, the principle is there nonetheless, so I hope that's been useful. Now this is quite a complicated subject and not surprisingly there is um, a chip available which will do uh, digital to analog conversion and in part two of the video uh, that's what we'll take a look at and we'll see if we can join the whole process together and convert something from uh, analog into digital and then back into analog again. So look forward to seeing you on the next video.